paintings have found uses for some of the strangest materials. For instance, we use pigs as a source of gelatin to make candy, and cow hides are used to make leather. But I bet you didn't know that your high quality perfumes contain whale vomit. You see, the reason why your colognes and perfumes are so expensive is not just because they're Hugo Boss or Gucci. It's actually because they stay on your skin longer due to a perfume fixative called ambergris. When a sperm whale eats something sharp, such as a shell, it secretes this sticky mucus to protect its stomach from being cut or otherwise injured. And then much like a cat in a fur ball, in order to expel these materials, the whale vomits into the ocean where this sticky mucus undergoes a chemical reaction involving salt from the sea, oxygen and sunlight, that causes it to turn into a hard, <coughs> waxy rock. These rocks then wash up on shore in the form of pebbles or boulders, where people collect them to sell to fragrance companies, who then extract the ambergris and put it in their high-end quality perfumes. Still think you smell fabulous? <laughs> well, there's good news. We can also make this compound synthetically in a test tube. However, with only a 33% yield, it's just as economically feasible as walking up and down the shoreline looking for whale bark. Which brings me to the picture of the balsam fir tree beside me. Scientists have recently discovered that this large conifer species also contains the ambergris compound. The current hypothesis is that ambergris, along with many other similar compounds, are involved in a type of plant chemical defense against pests and pathogens. The current hypothesis is that this chemical is also very, very similar to other chemicals that are in there. So when we do an extraction process, we pull out an array of compounds which don't necessarily have the same perfume fixative properties as our ambergris. Which is where I come into the picture. I'm currently cloning the DNA responsible for making ambergris out of that balsam fir tree and moving it into baker's yeast. It's sort of like a molecular cut and paste project. The goal of my thesis is to be able to produce this compound in a cheap and efficient way. The basic idea here is to be able to grow ambergris within yeast on the countertop, similar to how you make bread. And the beauty of this technology is that it can be used to make other complex, high-value compounds, such as those used by the pharmaceutical industry. Of course, I still have years of optimization ahead of me to improve the efficiency of the yeast system and quantity of the ambergris product. But for now, I'm just trying to change the world one Coco Chanel at a time. Thank you.